Hey, Max. <laughs> Mr. Nobody, crazy human turned abstract is a dangerous supervillain. The 1960s were glorious years for comics. The world was introduced to superheroes and supervillains with extraordinary capabilities engaging in mind-boggling adventures. So to say, it was hard to make a mark in that flood. And quite contrary to his name, it was one Mr. Nobody who managed to not only make a mark at his debut, but leave that mark lingering for years to come. He was a rock-solid enemy standing in the way of the superheroes and always stay true to his character traits at one point even serving as the narrator of the new TV show of Doom Patrol. Uniqueness was a characteristic of the villain in the Doom Patrol series which Mr. Nobody was a part of, and Mr. Nobody lived up to those expectations by and large, but only a devout reader of DC Comics would know of his presence besides the magnificent or more glorified villains like Lex Luthor or the Joker, but we are about to embark on a journey that will tell us more about the much dreaded entity. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Mr. Nobody First Introduction to the World of Crime The tale of Mr. Nobody begins as one Mr. Eric Morden, introduced in March 1964 via the first volume of the Doom Patrol series, issue number 86. He is known to be very much a human being at first, who eventually became no more than an abstract entity running by the aesthetics of the Dadaism art movement from the 20th century. Much like his co-followers, Morden had grown to accept weirdness and mostly nonsense as a part of his personality and life at large. True to all his traits, needless to say, there are quite a few absurd moments throughout the story that will only make sense in context of reading the comic. So we will try and not spoil things for you here and move on to the part where Morden started out and then established his presence. Eric's debut was through a truly impressively written panel where he was shown as someone who was an unlucky partner in crime on a mission to join an organization that called itself the Brotherhood of Evil with the offer of a gift in exchange. The organization was made up of evil forces who went by the names of The Brain and Monsieur Mala, the former of a literal living brain in a jar and the latter a highly intelligent and smart chimp. He got himself a chance to be considered after he managed to steal a giant robot from scientist Dr. Niles Calder, which Morden intended to present as a gift before being inducted. This robot called ROG was supposed to be used for experimental explorations in space, but now served the purpose of ravaging the Statue of Liberty as was instructed to Morden by the Brotherhood to cement his place as a member of theirs. In what can only be called an unfortunate series of events, for Morden after the very successful initial heist, he was forced to run for his life when Doom Patrol turned up on sight and defeated Rog. Not only did Morden fail at his first assignment of defeating the Doom Patrol, he was also put under the apprehension of being a coward unworthy of joining the clan he so badly wanted to. True to the first few words we mentioned Heron, Morden strangely disappeared off the pages for the longest time. The Doom Patrol series reintroduced Morden only in September 1989 when issue number 26 was released. The issue begins with Sunburst, deemed Japan's greatest superhero, trying to communicate with a woman from amongst his recent encounters. This woman had caught Sunburst's attention when he realized she had superpowers to the extent of her enemies not being able to gauge them. Before Sunburst can achieve what he wants, villains, the Fog and Sleepwalk barge in, abduct the woman and recruit her for their own cause while easily sidelining Sunburst. Since the lady is high key terrified of dirt, she is eternally grateful when taken by her abductors to Mr. Nobody who gives her a suit with special filters and a mask to go with it. In the flat located in Paris, labeled as Mr. Nobody's home, the three new friends slash henchmen of Mr. Nobody sits around him, ready to listen to his side of the story. One can say that Grant Morrison beautifully molds this plotline to tell the reader about the birth of Mr. Nobody from the simple Eric Morden who wanted to be part of the Brotherhood of Evil. He reveals that post his unsuccessful stunt at the Statue of Liberty all those years ago, he had to resort to hiding from his bosses, Monsieur Mala and the Brain, who were quite mad at him, enough to threaten him with death even if he showed his face to them again. As he veiled himself in the hustle and bustle of Paraguay with the help and guidance of one Dr. Bruckner, he was almost guilt tripped, albeit his enthusiasm clouding the underlying feeling to be subjected to certain experiments. Dr. 
Dr. Bruckner explained that he would become a new man from the results of these tests consequent of the Nazis' eugenic agenda. Bruckner placed him in a spherical white room and paralyzed him from the neck down. Then he merely left Eric there, experiencing virtually nothing. By the end of the first day, he had become completely insane. Time lost all meaning for him, though he would later learn that he was only trapped there for three days. On the night of that third day, he noticed a spot in the whiteness. He became obsessed with it, imagining it as some massive horror that appeared as a speck because it was far away from him. He imagined what would happen if he was spotted and approached by it gradually growing in size. The resulting mental breakdown led the chamber to explode, and that was precisely when Eric Morden became the Mr. Nobody the three listeners and hundreds of thousands of readers could see. Very appropriately, perhaps, he was deemed to be the spirit of the 21st century. Mr. Nobody then moved on to kill everyone present there as an aftermath of the gene bomb. He started recruiting new outcasts in a society who had superpowers but were rejected by the new generation. He deemed pure good and evil as an idea too old-fashioned for him and dismantled the whole idea he had of the brotherhood of evil. Eventually, he established and reigned over the brotherhood of Dada, something he deemed suited his taste and unreasonableness more than anything else. Mr. Nobody, presence in the Doom Patrol TV series. Doom Patrol's pilot episode starring Alan Tudyk, who portrayed the infamous Mr. Nobody, introduced him as one Mr. Morden who was driven to craziness by a Nazi scientist while experiments. Now, living as a mere shadow, Morden is depicted as no longer himself and merely a narrator of the tales of Doom Patrol, except of course when he is wrecking chaos and being a supervillain version of a thorn in the way of the superheroes. This this version of Eric Morden was discarded as a member of Brotherhood of Evil in 1948 and substituted by Monsieur Mala. His then girlfriend dumped him out of shame and that lit a fire in Morden to prove himself as a supervillain. When his attempt was foiled by a British scientist, Niles Calder, who went as far as to attempt to kill him for it, Morden pledged to take his revenge. He still was partially strong, with the prior attempt of becoming a more powerful villain having come halfway through before being encroached upon and Morden had turned into a being who knew almost everything that there is to know. His soul seemed to have fragmented and what remained was a shadow of him, but he was still capable of altering reality by way of manipulation. The plot of the show was heavily centered around Calder's actions, unlike the comics. Mr. Nobody, Show vs. Comics As the show opens, anyone who has read the comics would notice the stark difference in appearance. While the former shows the character as a pixelated being of sorts, made of unstable blocks stacked on top of each other, while the comics are more indicative of a shadowy, lurking figure who was broken up into pieces but has eyes and gloves. The comic book does not show as many changes in appearances of the character as much as the show does. The next apparent difference is clearly the level of threat that this character possess, although that can be attributed to his origins, more on that later. In the comic books, his moves are not as damaging. One might say, as the show projects him to be some massively powerful being attempting to alter the course of the universe towards evil, something not reflective of his reality in comic panels. Moving on to the origin story, the comics tells us a tale of Mr. Nobody as more than wanting to be one of the rotational members of the Brotherhood of Evil. The Brotherhood of the DC Universe has been supposed to be around for years otherwise emerging in the world from time to time to add the evil spice. He was inducted as a member, ousted later, but the evil genius had his part in that position. Even Dr. Bruckner, who helps transform comics more than to his avatar of Mr. Nobody, is completely missing from the show, as the show tries to show Mr. Nobody as an independently evil identity operating on his own. As we said earlier, scientist Niles Calder plays a different role herein. Mr. Nobody. Why is Mr. Nobody so powerful? The biggest revelation about the source of the powers of Mr. Nobody stems from the tale of how the Brotherhood of Dada was formed and the principles that it ran by. The utter strangeness of the universe coupled with the absurdity of its insane criminal members gave a rush and a thrill to Mr. Nobody. His process of change affected him deeply, making him capable of projecting his own insanity onto other people, infecting them in turn. He had a knack, quite unexpected 
explained of finding objects that were lost. The kick, lost objects belong to nobody when lost. His cunning, intelligence, and able leaderships are not to be doubted either, of course. In addition, possessing a physiology that's jarring to see, he appears to be almost unassailable to anyone who observes him. Add to that his psychic abilities that are so strong, he can enter dreams and know all that there is to know about an individual right at the first instance of meeting them. His skill of being able to have a mental hold on people, fully controlling them is unsettling too, because it is just as creepy as it sounds. The people he chooses to possess are fully aware of it and his behavior in their bodies. Mr. Nobody has a unique physiology which is disorienting for others to observe. Due to this physiology, he appears to be invulnerable and may be immortal. He also possesses largely unexplained psychic abilities as he has demonstrated the ability to enter dreams as well as to locate individuals and know everything about them before or when they meet. He is also capable of possessing people who appear to remain fully aware of his behavior while he inhabits their bodies. He is very intelligent and a competent leader. The difference in portrayals in the comics and then on the show seems similar on the outside, but their powers seem to differ in intensity, revealing the exact extent of those powers would perhaps mean unraveling the whole TV series, something that means spoilers, and we are not the ones who would give those. Mr. Nobody closing in. On the show, having the narrator be the villain himself is quite interesting at the outset. As less known as he may be to the infrequent comic reader, even the TV series did leave quite a lot to unpack. One of these packages clouding the whole storyline is that despite all the weirdness of physiology, Mr. Nobody seems to have children. If the Doom Patrol series, God forbid, goes off of the printing properties, we have a whole new generation to carry forth the legacy. Mr. Nobody shall leave behind notably adaptable in any format. Titicular superhero teams are surely not getting rid of the wall of persistent that this supervillain can be even in personal absence. Terry Nunn, his daughter, was the creation of Gerard Way of the Umbrella Academy fame and it is not a surprise that she is strange, wacky, uncontrollable, and very like Mr. Nobody. And if that was not quite sealing the deal, we have a grandchild in the picture too. Convolution being the second name of the Morden family, we have Arc twists and turns concluding in one milkman man being the said grandchild very superman like but picture a milk themed one your eyes are only widening with one eyebrow raised at that at this point perhaps all we can say is same and that is where we will let the rest hoping that we know more soon and if you liked our content don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already have a good one and be safe thanks everyone